happy that they think about me. I was really, uh, it was really fun. And you know, I'd like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, nice, they want me. But at the same time, I felt that fear again. Man. <laughs> I felt that fear because I felt yeah, right. oppression. Because right. oppression was, if I don't succeed, the whole team cannot support that technology. Sean, how you doing this week, man? Hey, hey, doing good, Carl. Long time, brother. I'm doing all good. Doing all good, man. Good to see you again. Yeah, you too, you too. Uh, so today it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we've got a special guest, uh, Jonathan Rowe. Uh, so he's a network specialist. And we thought to bring him on to get his experience, um, ask him about his background, and particularly trying to understand some of the digital transformations that he had to undergo uh, particularly in the last six months. So Jonathan, can you uh, quickly introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, yeah, sure, thank you. My name is Jonathan Rowe. Um, I work in an um, internet service provider company, like a telecom company, sorry, one of the largest one, Bell Canada, the largest one in Canada, I might say, and uh, it's been very, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good experience. It's been 15 years since I'm there and I moved through different roles, actually four, four different roles during that time and I had a lot of learnings and especially right now in the time where everything is changing and changing so fast, you need to be able to uh, to keep up and ways to, to stay on top of things. And you know, I've been challenged with that and I have to face that as a reality. And uh, uh, I just went forward with that. You know, you have to acknowledge it, embrace it and uh, go forward, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Welcome, man, welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. So let's let's continue on that. And um, I'd really love to learn how how did you get into your role? Um, how did that story start for you? Um, my my role currently right now, I'm working in the network operation, and I focus mainly on the PSTN transformation project. So we transform our legacy telephone networks, and you know, there's life cycles involved, etc. So I participate in, you know, doing the testing, the validation, the migration of, you know, different telephony gateway. And then I also provide support. So I'm in the support team and it's like a, a mix of project and operation. So when I say project, it would be upgrades. It could be augmentation. It could be new addition. It could be a new feature that we want to add, you know, to those, uh, to those gateways, et cetera. So I participate in, in both of that. Um, it's a challenging role because we are confronted to change all the time and we are confronted to unknown. So it's a fairly new technology. Uh, uh, I've been on it a, a couple of years now. And we often, I often find myself, you know, asking myself questions like, what I'm going to do with that, you know, or I, I have no idea how this is linked to that. Oh shoot, and you know, this is related to a technology X that I know very little about. So how I'm gonna face that challenge in order to go forward and provide the support, etc. So it's a lot of research and finding answer. So I'm getting better and better and you know, researching and finding answer. And with time you also build up also on your knowledge and you get more and more comfortable. But it's really about being comfortable at being uncomfortable. And I feel like if you embrace that, then you just open a new lane, a fast lane, a fast track for you to grow faster. Because for me, it's like when you go to the gym, you know, you're lifting weight, it's not comfortable. You need to break those fibro muscles, but we do them because we know the benefit that's gonna go after that. So I feel it's the same with going out of your comfort zone. It's like you are confronted to stuff and it forces you to you know, to grow, to learn and to adapt. So as long as you adapt and you grow, you get stronger and you get better with time and then you can do the same thing and you get another level. But I did not always have that mindset. Like when I started at Bell, um, I had 18 years old. So I was picked up at college. Uh, I was in a three year college program and in conception electronics. And they, I heard that Bell were, were was hiring 
but they were hiring graduates, so people like in the third year. But I said to myself, you know, what do I got to lose? You know, let me try it. Let me, you know, let me take a chance. You know, be positive. So I just put my CV in there. I said, you know, we never know. The worst, what, what, what would be the worst that could happen? You know, and they, I did call, get called in for an interview. I did the interview. They did like me. And afterwards, in retrospective, when I asked, they tell me that the fact that I survived at McDonald for four years. They said you'll be able to survive with us for one summer. In fact, I never <laughs> left since. So that's what that was my way in. I came into that company. It was a very very big company. So for me, it was a, a big win because uh, a lot of people were looking either at Bell or Adro Adro Quebec for electronics. So that was like the two big places where people wanted to get in. So I was happy. Uh, and that second year. I learned something called the DMS, and the DMS is like the big brain behind the PSTN uh, uh, technology. It's like the the main computer or the main the main engine, the main device that would you know manage all the lines, that do all the translation, the routing. That's what make the decision that when you dial number X Y Z, the call has to go through this central office to this central office to there. It's like the big engine. So this is where I started to put my hands on that. But I was learning just a little, little, little piece of it, just the line portion, just enough to support a residential and business customer for line. I was being passive because at the beginning, uh, since I was the youngest in the company, I was doing shift, you know, uh, moving, you know, schedule weekends, evenings, etc. But I knew I had to do it. You know, it's just the beginning. But at a certain point, I was looking for stability. So, and I was in a comfortable, comfortable, comfortable zone, a comfort zone, where I got my shift that I wanted to. Uh, I knew the job. I was able to support everything I had to do. So I was, you know, comfortable at that point. And I stay like that, passive for eight years. So, Sean, and, let me just sorry, Jonathan. Let yeah. me just uh, get to that point where that where you came to that epiphany of being uncomfortable. So where is it in your journey that you realized, you know, you need to be uncomfortable? And what was that experience like? Um, it was actually at the end of that eight years because there was some organizational, organizational change that happened. So what happened, I had my status was, uh, at, uh, I had a permanent status, but not full-time, temporary. But I was almost working full time, like 37.5 hours a week. But something, you know, there was some change in the company and they reduced my hours to the minimum. So I was doing 18 hours a week, only three days of six hours. And at that time, I was planning on buying my first house. So I needed, you know, the hours I needed to save money. Yeah. I had a plan. Mm -hmm. That's a like, good way to be get uncomfortable. <laughs> and I was, you know, you know, pinned to the wall and I said, what I'm going to do. So. I waited and stayed in that same group for a year, for another 12 months, passionately waiting for something good to happen to me, for the universe to notice me and, you know, something would mi miraculously happen. And nothing happened. And at a certain point, I'm like, man, this makes no sense, you know? I'm there, I have the opportunities in front of me, but I just don't want to get out of my comfort zone. So, you know, pick yourself up and do something. So I remember I called back the same manager I called the first time. It's, it's, it's the NOC team, the network, network operation team. And I called her a year after and I said, OK, I would like to apply for your team. But this time I'm ready to do the shifts and the nights, you know, if you're willing to accept me. So we did the interview that went well. So that was the first time I went out of my comfort zone, I would say level one. So and for me, that was a, a, a big trigger because it put it put me back into learning mode, like in, you know, development mode. Since I left school and I was getting my comfort zone, I was just browsing and doing like my regular day job, focus on doing well, but not more, but not to a new group. So I had to learn something new. So that really expand my knowledge. And I really leveraged that for me to not only know the lines, but starting to know the peripherals that are behind the lines and how they interact with each other and how different teams interact with each other. When there's an alarm over here, this thing get impacted, this device get impacted, those lines goes down, etc. So I started to understand. 
interact with people outside also how to fix those problems mm -hmm. and i just focus on doing my job uh learning the most as, as i could so you took all those experiences through that time you made the, the first uncomfortable move which is to join a team uh, that maybe didn't have the best hours for you, but you gained a lot of experience from that, which is fantastic. You know, if you go a few years to maybe where you currently are, what is probably the most uh, impactful and uncomfortable state that you had to endure and overcome? Wow. Um, there was several one of them. And um, while I was in that group, uh, you know, I was asking a lot of questions. I was taking notes. I was really focused on, you know, I wanted to learn and, you know, be good at what I do. And I also mm -hmm. wanted to understand the big picture. So they did notice that and they saw that my enthusiasm wanted to learn. I got presented with that offer and it was very scary. It was really nice for me because it was finally a day shift job, one to five, uh, Monday to Friday, no evenings, no weekends. So that was happy about that. But the responsibility that would come with that was really heavy because she was the only one supporting that and she was the support. So I knew that when she got, I would be the one I have to respond to all the you know problems of all the different teams that used to come to her. And I needed to bring my knowledge up to a certain level in order to be able to provide them support. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be a, a duck here and get it fired at, you know? So I felt the pressure, but I didn't back off. You know, uh, when you face fear, I felt like I shouldn't be paralyzed by it, but I should embrace it. So mm -hmm. in other words, it's like I use that fear as a source of energy. So for mm -hmm. me, fear is a feeling to tell you it's like a, a ring a sirens that ring that tell you, watch out. There might be a danger here. There's something, you know, you have to do something. So what fear makes you do? It make you instinct instinctively protect yourself. But when you embrace it, now you can start thinking and strategize about what I'm gonna do if I do this this way. I'm gonna have to do this, you know, put this in, in, in place for protection, or I have to think about a backup plan, or I need to think about this and that. So I didn't run away from that fear. I just embrace it and go forward with it. I didn't ignore it and, you know, left it in the back of my mind and that fear would keep creeping on me and looking at me and at some point would just jump on me and invade me i just look it right in the eyes and just face it i said you know i have confidence in my my skills i know i can learn i know i can improve so i'm confident about that it's just i know it's a it's a big challenge and i took a lot of notes during that time because i know that those notes will be like my most important resource in order to to help me remember or answer those, you know, feedback that I got afterwards. So we were able to take over the team transparently in the eyes of the company that was seamlessly. Nobody complains and we're able to take everything that was thrown at us. And it was like a, a big example of success of knowledge transfer. So that was like a really great uh, feeling. That's amazing. I mean, that sounds like the journey you took while, um, it wasn't direct the fact that you got to that place where you gained the experience and you looked fear in the eye and took that on um, that is a quite an accomplishment now i'm i'm feverishly want to know so where are you now in your experience in your the, role the the team where i'm in now right now is actually the last the last time i went very out of my comfort zone and i think that was the part i was the most um not daunting, but the most challenging for me to overcome in my career. Because, okay, so what happened is uh, there was a meeting in the team and, you know, they were presenting this new technology, the one I'm working on right now. And they say, okay, this technology is coming in our team, you know, in a couple of years or we don't know exactly how much time. And, you know, it's a hybrid technology between telephony and IP. So it would be a good fit if you guys started to look into IP, you know? So that was a recommendation. It was not mandatory. So I took this as a, a, a go for me to say, OK, you know what? You've been thinking about CCNA. Now you have a reason to do it. Just go and do it. So I took about a year of self-taught, self-training 
to learn about CCNA. I was studying during lunchtime, during commute, and I actually got my certification after one year. So when I came back, when I not came back, but when I got my certification, my leaders were like, wow, you actually went and did it. You know, you didn't, you just, it didn't fell in the deaf year. You, I'm impressed. I'm happy you guys do that. And also with, you know, the, the rest, I already explained about how the, the success it was, you know, to taking over this group. So they came to me and they gave me that proposition. They said, okay, this technology is coming soon to our team. So we want to be able to take uh, this responsibility, but in order to take that responsibility, we need someone, someone prime to be the support on that technology. So that person will be responsible for that technology in our team, in our region. And that would be the prime person. So like the main support guy. And we think about you because we know that you like to learn and you're good at learning and stuff like that. I think we, it would be good. Would you like it? I was really happy that they think about me. I was really, uh, it was really fun. And you know, I'd like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, nice. They want me. But at the same time, I felt that fear again. <laughs> I felt that fear because I felt depression. Yeah. Because right. depression was, if I don't succeed, the whole team cannot support that technology. So the amount of time wasted and somebody else would take over that technology. And also, I think this technology was supposed to come to us before, but stuff happened and didn't happen. So they were really hoping for this to work this time and they were really betting on me. So I felt like they were betting on me and I'm like, I don't want to let them down. So, you know, I felt, you know, again, with the fear straight in the eyes and, you know, go forward. So, a couple of weeks before I actually, what they're going to do, they're going to send me to a disc group and this group is already managing that technology. So I'm going to go there to learn it. So I took books and I asked for all the documentation I could get. This is proprietary information. So you cannot find it anywhere else than inside of the company or the vendor providing you. Mm -hmm. So I took that documentation and I remember in all my little holes out in between the job I was doing, I was reading the documentation cover to cover. Then the time come, I actually went into that team. And when I get into that team, it was it was not as I expected because I came to that team full of energy, inspiration, with my backpack full of the binders and all the notes that I took. And I come to that team, I'm like, hey, I'm here, like almost. And they were like, who are you? Uh, well, yeah, I'm we've Jonathan. all felt that, eh? <laughs> we've all felt that, eh, Sean? Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who sent you? Well, my yeah. leader. What are you here for? About to learn this technology. Okay, what do you want to learn about it? I don't know. I don't know anything about this technology. Well, it's it's very vague, so you need to tell us what you want to learn about. Well, I don't know what you guys can show me, but who's going to train you? I don't know. You get. I was hoping you guys would, you know. Basically, there was no plan for me when I got there. Mm -hmm. And that was the most scariest part for me because I was ready to learn, but they were not ready to train me. So I was like, what I'm going to do now, I feel like I hit a wall and, you know, but I didn't back away right away and said, starting to make excuses or complaints and stuff like that. They were not unwelcoming. They were welcoming. They did welcoming, but they're just not prepared or well prepared for me to, to get a training. And for that under uh, the size that I needed to in order to do that. So what happened is that I took a little bit of time to step back, take a big hair and I said, okay, Joe, do it one thing at a time and see how it goes. You know, I was in that group for about six months in training with little to no supervision at all. I could have spent the six months just rolling my tons and just watching and thinking about the excuses I'm going to make after that when, you know, stuff cannot make happen or just complaining that somebody else has to make something happen for me. But right. I didn't, I didn't want to take that route. I just wanted to do everything in my power to make it happen. So what I did, I did the very old fashioned way. I took a chair. I went in that little cubicle. Well, there was a you know, couple of people, two people that was working in that technology. And I sat on that chair and I just watched them working. So at first I was just looking at them and, you know, watch them solve problems that were coming at them. Mm -hmm. Then I was asking questions, taking notes. I actually made myself a mini desk in between two pieces of furniture. I just put like a, like a little table and it was not really a de official desk, but I'd rather be here than a real desk because I wanted to be close to them and see. 
So I was asking questions during that time and taking notes. And the way I was taking notes this time, instead of using like just a block note or WordPad or Microsoft Word, I started to use emails. So I was writing email notes to myself and I had like a folder in my email and I keep sending email to myself about, okay, today, today I learned about X, Y, Z. And I heard this new term, cool. it rings a bell about something. I go back in my back, open my binder and reread that section. Or sometimes they were busy. So I go, I go back on the vendor website, try to find the documentation on this and try to understand it or read it. And I did that for six months. But that sounds very detailed, Jonathan. Like that's quite incredible. And after you've reached that point where you felt that you've got all that experience, where did that take you currently to your current position now? Actually, uh, when I learned stuff, I learned stuff, you know, uh, not in the right order, like like in logical order. Like I would learn Z over here, and three months later I would learn F, and then I would learn I. Then you know, two months after that I learned A, and I'm like, oh, this is the beginning, and I put the pieces together. Oh. So. After that six months, I had a lot of notes taken. I started participating in calls and I started to get more comfortable. And now I felt like I started to understand a little bit better the technology to a point where they could bring me back and we could bring the technology back. So what I did with all those notes that I took, I just reassembled them and put them like in the right order. And I could be able, I was able to make like proper training documents to bring other people up to speed and give them like the knowledge in the way they should have received it and not like all uh, mixed. And from that point, I'm still in that team today and uh, it's still, still being a challenge because you're learning every day. But I keep working on that. And throughout that point, during that six months, I, I would say the thing that I learned the most is I learned to self-evaluate myself. So I would say every now and then I would almost have a conversation with myself, you know, what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses? You know, what I need to work on in order to be able to support that technology. So I was thinking about all the different points and I was focused on that, you know, to either do more research or ask questions on them. And at the same time, I was looking at my strength and I said, I don't want to lose that strength. So I want to keep building on that strength. So I want to keep working on that. And I kept that same methodology of, you know, self-evaluation until today. Now it's been four years, maybe I'm in that group and I still do the same things. And I have like, I've uh, evolved my, the way I manage my emails. So, uh, you know, with time to get so much emails now with, with projects and thus and that, I get overflown, but I developed like a technique in order to manage that. So I can bring my email down to zero and- uh, Wow. I actually wow. started with read a book so getting things done by david. Yeah, yeah david allen yeah i read that book and i remember in that section they said okay you need to be able to manage your email and bring them back to zero but very few people actually do that and i was happy to read that and say i'm actually already doing that so i'm on the right track so <laughs> i was really happy i used some of this trick also to to enhance what i was doing and i read the phoenix project too it was a great book yeah, uh, I love that book. Yeah. That's a fantastic yeah. book. I love that. A recommendation from my study group. Uh, a friend there, you know, just sent it to me and said, it's a great book to read. I read it and you know, sometimes I see myself or sometimes I see situation that is similar to what happened in the book. And, Perfect. you know, but anyway, there's, there's so, mu so much stuff. The, the door is open now and my mind is open and now I welcome challenges and I just, you know, embrace fears, go forward and I dig deeper. And my conscience is clear because I give my best in everything I do. So that's that's the way I am. I just want to keep focused and you know keep improving that way. Such, wow, that uh, what a journey! I mean, facing your fears but getting that uncomfortableness from the time you arrived and they had no action plan for you. The fact that you had to make your own action plan to learn this new uh, technique that's proprietary. The fact that you took your notes and your decisive way of capturing notes and emailed it back to yourself so you can put that together. And then lastly, organizing that into a, a consecutive way of how this process works. I'm saying process because I'm a process mm -hmm. nerd. So I assume you put from A back to Z and brought that back to your team and taught everyone. I, that's absolutely fantastic, Jonathan. Absolutely. Thank you. What are some of the tactics that you've learned over those years 
that you lean on now for the last six months, particularly for what we're going through. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you can talk about what you used to get through some of your most challenging initiatives or projects in the last six months? Um, I use different things. Uh, taking notes is a big part of it. And, you know, that senior employee that trained me was also a, a kind of mentor for me because she also gave me like personal and career career advice that I, I really like to. And mm -hmm. one of them was you need to share, you know, don't hold that knowledge just for you. you know, sometimes you can see that there's a mindset where people will gain something and they will hold on to it because, you know, that's what that's my value. You know, I'm good. Mm -hmm. they, they keep me every year because I know this stuff. But right now, especially right now, is the ch things are changing so fast. If you stay in the silo, you won't be able to gain knowledge at the same time. You know, if you don't give, you won't receive. So it goes both ways. If your hands is closed, yeah, you won't lose, but you cannot, you cannot put anything back in your hands. You need to be able to go back and forth. So sharing was a big part of it. And I trained mm -hmm. people and the notes that I took after, the, after that becomes training documents. I was able to convert them in training documents and share a lot of the knowledge that she teach me back to someone else. So that person could, you know, replace me when eventually when I left that group for it something different and uh, tactics that I use when I was taking notes is uh, uh, that was a big part of it like when I took notes I took notes in a way as if I didn't know anything at, at all about the subject as if I was starting from zero mm -hmm. so that way if I go back on this note tomorrow or 10 years from now it's like I can teach myself back where I was at that time because I started from the ground up. So I just, yeah, you know, I just, just didn't take a note like, okay, this meant this. I just started and always trying to understand the big picture. So, you know, break it down and say this and that. And at the same time, when you do this and you give training, it's also making you refresh your basics. So uh, I heard or I read somewhere that, you know, when you're working out, you're learning, etc. It's like you're building like a, a tower. But mm. what's stopping you from getting, you know, that little margin to make you like really an expert? It's your base because your foundation is not solid enough. So when I give training to people, it's for me a way also to review my foundation, go back to the stuff that I learned before, and I review them because I need to explain them. And when you explain something, it's actually it's actually a known technique. It's called the Feynman technique, where mm. you would you know learn by teaching. So if you find yourself you're trying to explain something but you cannot explain it well, that means you didn't understand it well enough. So it's like the the reverse of, or like a different version of what Einstein said. Mm -hmm. But when I do that, I reaffirm my basis. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I didn't I didn't notice that at that time. And I just learned something new that, and now that little something helped me to build another stump, something, another brick and can put on top of it. I love, I love hearing this. Like, I love the tactics you mentioned. So right away, what I'm getting from you is that you took notes and the style and method you took notes really went a long way. Uh, I love the fact that you meant, uh, mentioned that you have a mentor. Now, I'm a big, strong believer of a mentor. I've had maybe two. Yeah, isn't that key, Sean? Like, I, mm. I've had two um, over the years, uh, excuse me, three over the years, and every stage of that mentorship, I've learned more. And then lastly, the fact that you share what you know, that, that goes a long way. I, I completely agree with you that having this information, not sharing with anyone, won't do any better for you and the organization that you're working for. That's fantastic. Yeah, if I could add to what Carl's saying, I, I'm really inspired by everything that you're telling us, sharing with us here to, today, Jonathan. And um, I find that um, when faced with a challenge, um, just your energy to um, break out of our comfort zone and, uh, you know, recognize that we, we might need to learn something new, change in some way in order to dr drive a future um, is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So um, yeah, I really, really respect and admire those qualities in you and your story. Um, I'm interested to know how others can can follow your journey and um, 
rise in the company and do really creative things um, and help their companies move forward. Um, from your line of sight, how would you how would you suggest that others can can follow in your journey and in your footsteps? Um, there's different ways. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, so you can follow me on LinkedIn and you know send me messages, exchange with me. Nice. Um, I'm also a part of a study group called Rudder Gods. So it's one of the study groups that I found <laughs> while I was learning IP. Rudder Gods, okay. Yeah, the god. It's like the gods of router. So router. Oh, router. Okay, okay. Yeah, I get it. Oh, yeah. Cool. Router, really cool. Yeah, routers and <laughs> yeah. switches. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. So, okay, I love it. Continue. Sorry. Go ahead. While I was uh, learning about IP, I was doing my certification CCNA, and then after that, I was going after my CCNP. I was doing some research online because I wanted like a, a a community and I wanted to find the you know the different resource that I could use to to learn. And the good thing about IP since it's you know open, you can find a lot of sources over the internet about you know learning those stuff. Right. And I find I found uh, found on a video, and they were talking about this group called Rudder Gods, and I was intrigued. So I make some research and I finally find a way it's a meetup group and when you sign up to the meetup group it's a new invite and then you can access like their channels it's like a big they use river it's you know it's a similar to slack mm. and it's a great community i made good friends there um exchange i was able to get a lot of you know, a good recommendation about training resources good um, they actually sent me to cisco live um nice. In California, I'm, I'm based in Montreal, so I was able to go to California, go to Cisco Live. They give me a recommendation. I did a boot camp with Narbic over there. I also follow another boot camp online with Coward Bot on different, you know, uh, IP technologies. Uh, it's a great place. So anyone, you know, uh, studying, going into networking, IP related, you know, rather gods, it's a great place to go. And uh, I can give you the details on how to to subscribe, and you can join me there also. I really appreciate your time here, uh, Jonathan, today, um, for telling us your story. And you gave some really, really high value key points on how to uh, move your career forward and uh, get out of your comfort zone and really rise at different different levels of the organization. Um, and that's what really separates us from. Um, from staying in the same role all the time and it becoming too comfortable, right? And um, yeah, I, I've definitely walked away so, with some really, really powerful uh, takeaways. So we thank you, Jonathan, for your, your time today. And thank of you. course, always Carl for, for us working together. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, and, I love uh, this interview. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you guys for having me. It's been a pleasure and you know, I enjoy what you guys do and uh, the you. knowledge that you guys share. You guys are very generous share a lot of great tips and and i think those tips are good for everyone today especially in the, in the time today because you see changes everywhere and you need to adapt and you provide some good tips for people you know there to adapt and you know uh step up so i really appreciate that and uh, keep keep doing what you guys do also i appreciate uh, it jonathan thanks so much right. man well Thank said you. all right good stuff so and there you go. There you have it, folks. There's another episode of As Is To Be. Thank you for the time. We'll see you on the flip side. Peace. All right, peace.